Welcome to Active Love Adoptions Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Griffith, and this is my co-host, Heidi. Hello. <laughs> and today we're really excited. We have Cherie and Wendy. Yes. Um, Cherie is Wendy's birth mom. And so we're really excited to hear that. And Cherie also has a podcast. Mm-hmm. And I'm sh- and do you want to share what it's about? Just Oh, yeah. So um, I talk a lot about consciousness and um, feminine spirituality, the divine feminine, a lot of stuff on health. I love to dive deep into topics that are not or, that are rarely explored. Yeah. yeah. And those things I feel like are really like a lot of people want to know that stuff, but they also don't want to maybe do the work to research it. <laughs> yeah. They want to listen. Yeah. I <laughs> just, just this is like, I, I like to consume copious amounts of random ever knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's kind of how my dad works. He like, it, he arms himself with knowledge so that he can. It keeps you safe. Ready. Yeah, it does. It keeps yes. you safe. Yeah, it's an illusion, though. But anyway, that's a whole other, <laughs> like, that's a whole other thing. Okay, so t- yeah. tell us tell us your st- your adoption story as a birth mom, and then we'll yeah. get your perspective. Great. Well, um, found myself in an unplanned pregnancy when I was a junior in um, college, and I was 24. My boyfriend was four years older than me, Dave. And... Um, it quickly became apparent that marriage was not going to be the the thing for us. Um, we actually were engaged at one point, and then both of us just knew that it was not it's not feasible. Um, I, there's so much I could share, but just to just to distill it down, I was just going to be that single mom who had one year of school left. I, I got my own apartment, and I just kind of pushed everybody away. Like this is this is I'm going to do this, and. Um, I, I don't know what the catalyst was to shift me. I know that my uncle and aunt gave me a book, and it's called My Child, Your Child. Are you guys familiar with that book? It was, it was oh, out of, I think it's out of print now. But it was um, an LDS book um, published by Desiree about a birth mother. And and I, I, I don't know, something about reading that just made me think about adoption in different Because I had a perception that adoption was um, kind of giving away, as you guys know, yeah. there's that yeah. phrase, like just giving away, like into the ethers of whatever. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't conceive of that. Yeah. That was just not something I thought I was capable of or something that I would, I just, I couldn't do it. But then I started learning there's this thing called open adoption. And, um, and then through a series of, I don't even want to call them random events. Maybe they are, but, uh, just, you know, when you're on a certain path, certain people or books or things will just happen on your path and you're like I'm listening like okay Mm -hmm. so I just went one day I was working as a secretary and I am I had it this is back when they had phone books little phone (laughs) books I know the phone books (laughs) I love the phone books so I just went to the yellow pages under adoption and a act of love it was like two a's I'm like that's bad grammar (laughs) still get that But okay, I'll give them a, but it was like the first, so I actually called and Kathy, your mom answered and it was just, she has this angel voice. Yes. And I was already, I had a lot of stuff heaped on me, like, you know, that I fell from grace and I was unworthy and all just all the cultural oh, religious stuff <laughs> yes i don't know a birth mother who doesn't carry the scarlet letter yeah. you know yeah. for a time it's just highly stigmatized and i was working through the repentance process with my bishop and it was just a really tender time but i wanted to do the right thing the right thing yeah you know mm-hmm. not not for me but for the baby and i knew she was a girl i knew from the second i don't i can't even tell you how but i just knew it was a girl and um so I call Kath, I call the agency and Kathy answers and we just start talking and she's like, oh, you sound like an angel. And I was like, she does not know that I am literally like Jezebel the Harley. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, if you, cause no, I wasn't getting that from anybody else. No, no, yeah. no. Um, so we arranged to meet, I was supposed to drive to her house. And so the next day, so I was sweating and at work. The next day, and I, I'm going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go. I'm not going to go. What am I doing? I don't know if I can do this. But something just pulled me there, and she just embraced me. She told me I was beautiful. She told, kept telling me I was an angel, and then she put took me to the living room, and she had these, um, I guess, three reminders with the profile. Yeah, with the profiles of the families. <laughs> She's like, I remember that, and well, I was, because I was actually got married and. We were trying to have a child yeah, when yeah. she was placing, and so I was adopting. I that, 
Oh, uh, okay. But <laughs> yeah, so I worked with my mom. I entered the adoptive family line. And everything was done out of my mom's house. So. Oh, totally. And yeah, it was a yeah. nice big house. And, yeah. But it, there was a good feeling. It was a good feeling. I didn't, oh, and I should back up. Like, I was meeting at my bishop's suggestion with LDS. Well, they're not. Yeah, they're not. This is the same where it was LDS family. That's so where she That's where I played. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she would come to my apartment. Okay. Before, either before or after work. And I just, I just didn't, but no we just felt no, I don't, I don't think I want to go and do that. I don't want to go through Elias Family Services. So that was just, this is on the heels of that. Yeah. So, but wasn't it because it was closed? Yeah. That was yeah, like a, a big scene. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They because you're kind of not. I did semi-open. Oh, okay. So it was like, I open yeah. first names, not where they live. Yeah. But I think back when they went yeah. was probably closed and then they still yes, they they do it. Oh, yeah. Because if you're out of 30, my son's almost 21. So, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. They were kind of starting to open that yeah. and then... Yeah. It was, it was definitely closed. Yeah. When you, yeah. 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 And I didn't even, that wasn't even, I guess, I guess I, I just, in my mind, I was just like, I'm going to do place this child for adoption and hope that she comes back and visits me when she's older. I didn't, I wasn't really doing it to have an open adoption. Yeah. I was just going off my gut and my heart and like my, you answer to prayers. Yeah. Sometimes. So. But at the same time, I'm like, and if there's any way that I can be a part of things, that would be a nice bonus. Mm-hmm. So I just didn't feel that autonomy with LDS yeah. Family Services. Yeah. So by the time Kathy was just like so open and just like, look at these. Fa-, and I was like, wow, this protocol seems really casual. It felt it, like I could relax. Like, yeah. And I didn't feel like, I don't know. It, it wasn't, was a, business or it wasn't like agenda, a transaction. No, it wasn't agenda driven at all. I just felt her genuine, like, you know care I, but she told me later that she'd been praying she's like literally before you called i was on my knees praying for birth moms because they had just started they just you just yes, opened the doors yeah. yeah so um i didn't know any of that but yeah so i'm looking at mm-hmm. these while we're talking she and i it was like meeting somebody that you already knew for yeah. ages so we're talking i'm talking and as we're doing that i'm like and i'm probably like four months along by this time i'm looking at different profiles and she's like, you keep turning back to this one family. And I was like, I do? Because it was like not, not conscious. conscious. Yeah. And it was. <laughs> it was I, I, I know was... exactly <laughs> the picture that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so I can see it in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's in your scrapbook now. But yeah, so Alan and Susan, and they had this little blonde three-year-old. I thought she was really cute. But I didn't, like, okay. I just had in my mind, if I'm going to place my child, it's going to be like Barbie and Ken, like, not in a like not in a no but you know what i mean like yeah. the all like american very golden child. retriever yeah it's like <laughs> picket fence really yeah but I did it 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 a, yeah i was like i had it i had this ideal in my mind of like and no oh, children like, all these probably. this oh, just I like know. idealistic yeah. like super cool family yeah. not that they're not but i'm just saying like <laughs> They were not in this package that I yeah that you created. That I am Asian yes. for. You know, we weren't but, like a model. We weren't an insurance, <laughs> an, an insurance commercial family. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, no, it was not like the Buster family. So, um, but what she just just take these profiles home with you tonight, and she just gave them to me and said, you know, you seem like a spiritual person. You can probably get your own answers. So there was this this non attachment with it, which I really appreciated. There was no pressure. So sure enough. Um, that night I, I was a huge Michael McLean fan, you know, who Michael McLean is. So he has the song called together forever. We can be together. So I was listening to that while I was deciding like, oh, am I really going to do this? Am I really going to choose a family? Am I really going to do adoption? And then I felt like her soul came through and was kind of like singing that song to me. It's hard to say goodbye and let go and hard to see it end, but Mm -hmm. It was just hard to explain. It was like this big soul download. And I'm like, okay. And I knew it was, the, it, I knew it was Alan and Susan. I knew they were the family. And then as soon as I saw the little girl, I knew that that was her sister. And um, I had, I didn't, I didn't officially know I was having a girl yet. Like I hadn't had the sonogram to tell me, but I just knew. Yeah. So, and it was a very feminine energy. presence and, and reassurance and yeah, energy and so I think it was the next day at work. I called Kathy and I said, I know what I'm doing. I know this is the family. Like, this is the thing about me. Like, God knows this too. Like, I don't dip my toe into something. If I get a, 
like if I'm if it's a maybe if that doesn't I don't that is once I get a yes I'm I'm not I'm gonna do it you know and so anyway so I actually ended up calling them with Kathy on the line she's like I don't usually do this but <laughs> and um it just never do it all the time. <laughs> now you do it all the time. Now it's like a normal thing. It, it's a normal practice. I, I was like, like this is really was this legal? Like, yeah. you know, it was like, oh, I like this. <laughs> this feels a little dangerous. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. But um, Alan, the, you know, the husband, he, he sounds a little bit like Eeyore. Yeah. That was my first that, thing is like. I would say he is Eeyore. Oh, that <laughs> is his actual first yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. He's just kind of slow drawl and he's like, bless your heart. Like, that's exactly Where how he sounds. Here in Utah. Well, yeah. Is he from Utah? Or Utah? Yeah. How do you have a draw? He just It's does. just his way. It's just, just very matters. like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Are you kidding? If, if people from other states hear people from Utah, yeah. tell us we have an accent. We do. Well, I know, but my husband was raised in Georgia, and he does not have an accent. He yeah. can pull it together and get one, but yeah. like, he's like, I want to. <laughs> yeah but, <laughs> yeah well and i just felt this instant like surrounding from them of just you know they they were just really into my experience and how hard this was for me and i and i basically said to them like i've been told this is the child that i'm carrying is yours and it was just like a pin a pin could drop and that's when he was like Bless your heart. and i think your mom was probably crying I, i'm pretty sure she was <laughs> and that here's the thing about because we met right after that and um, they just instantly embraced me, and we had this level of comfortability. Um, and I don't know; it just it just naturally kind of evolved. I didn't experience any dissonant feelings until, because uh, this is the, I guess this is the way things work when you're making a big, huge life decision that affects not only this life but the next. Because in my worldview at the time, I was like saying goodbye forever like, and ever, ever. <laughs> and uh, like no connection no n- it was just it was so final to yeah. me and so I I had to work through that and I did change my mind at one point and I called Kathy and I'm like I think I want to look at different families like oh so I met like with three or four other families just because I needed to know that for sure that, that was the family um but then it was abundantly clear that I need to stick with my original plan. Um, so I don't know what more you want to hear, but I actually have a C-section. Okay. So I want to hear all of it. <laughs> all the nitty gritty. I want to hear well, all of I, it. I, I will say that the birth father and I, oh gosh. So Shout out to Dave. Dave. <laughs> thanks for all the trauma. <laughs> thanks for all the trauma. Um, no, we, kidding. He'll never he came this, to so the hospital. Sorry. He came to the hospital. He will never listen to us. He <laughs> should have. <laughs> <laughs> we're a handful oh um, we really is like just, a little more we really are trouble just Sorry. wait no, so i'm exactly the same way i'm always like he sucks he's not gonna yeah. anything to your lives and i'm like but if you want to meet him it's fine yeah 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 i get it yeah well i tried to always okay so we'll get to him in a minute but <laughs> so i am like you know he's adopted so he's trauma from that because his adoptive parents were not abusive and so he got sent away and that's how he ended up in Utah, and that's how we met. And anyway, he had um, gotten married and had two children and got divorced by the time I met him. So he had these two children that were like four and two, which we haven't been able to track down. We should. We should. Yeah. Um, Compare trauma. From yeah. To do DNA tests. Like, yeah. Either really. You should. You should. You should. <laughs> He's got probably a few kids I could connect with. No. Yeah. Who has the least, at least at least one. At least one. Three. 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 So anyway. The one after you and then one after you. Oh, my so goodness. he had seven oh. different women. Oh, wow. yeah. So I said, please take a DNA test before you date anyone because I don't know if you're going to be related to it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's just seven, yeah, you know about. Yeah, I know about. Exactly. I know about. He knows about. So yeah. it's well, great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was just not healthy. And um, there was just a lot of mucky stuff. And and a big reason for me placing her was so she wouldn't have to be have, have to be beholden to that energy and where he was at, where he's still at. And yeah, that, and then all that trauma. trauma. Like you're like you're gonna because sometimes you don't realize all, all the trauma you have and that you're passing it along to oh, your children sure. or your spouse or whatever. Yeah, that, there can be a lot of projection. In yeah. his case, he just wasn't. Yeah, it just wasn't a healthy thing. So, um, so he signed the relinquishment during my pregnancy, but he came to the hospital right after I had her, and he was crying and holding her, and I could just see this 
turn and he was like pretty much telling me you don't have to do this like you know i'll support you and the smell of babies does something so we did right. really it's it's like yeah well i think oh. it brought up his it's own like, adoption yeah stuff, it's you know? weird it's what like it does it's a drug like i saw mine and i was like can i keep him yeah i was like he's it's... not a puppy no it's yummy <laughs> Well, yeah, and I had, with it being a C-section, so I was in the hospital longer. Yeah. And I had already started her a scrapbook, and I had written her a letter during my pregnancy, and uh, the team was making copies of it and crying, like, Cindy, yeah. I don't know if you guys, is Cindy still with She's you? Still, she does. Oh, she comes in up here, uh, sometimes, yeah, occasionally she helps with um, getting the files. I, I would love to get so. her eggs. She's yeah. so good. So, so yeah, so I had this scrapbook all ready to go and then he came and held her and then it brought up more. And then apparently the next day he was calling and calling and calling me, but it went to the wrong ho- uh, hospital room, begging me not to place her, to rethink mm-hmm. it. But, um, do you feel like you would have, if he would have, no, no, doesn't even matter because for on me, his hands and knees, on, a, on his hands and knees, because I didn't respect him. Number okay. one. And number two, that's he fair. didn't get the heart of what I was trying to. Correct. The, the spiritual vision. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. So, so anyway, yeah, then my mom showed up and my mom was um, a real great Shout support out to Marilyn. To my, Marilyn. Yeah. She, she was very um, just picking me up, wiping my nose, get yourself dressed. The re- adoption agency people are going to be here soon. So I would say like relinquishment was a spiritual experience for me, but it was also... I think I disassociated because it was just so much to try to take in. Yeah. So I think a part of me just kind of like, all right, I'll sign it. And like, I just kind of splintered a part of my psyche. This is me deconstructing it later. It's been 30 years. Yeah. Um, like you were numb. And so you're- I was numb, but I was resolute. I had peace. I knew I was doing the right thing. But I also separate from the emotional part. Yeah. My human body wanted her. Yes. You know, and the hardest part. Well, okay. So. So when Susan and Alan came in after I had signed everything, um, they were in the waiting room and um, they had Rebecca, the little girl with them. And after everything was signed, they came in and they went straight for me, not her. Yeah, I was holding her that they were really tuned into my experience. And uh, that has like touched me all these years Mm -hmm. because I knew that they wanted to make sure that I was okay. And before they went for the goods. Yeah. 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 It's like, and she was such a beautiful baby because she didn't have to go through the birth canal. So like, her she face was so good. pretty. No cone head. head. No cone no. head. Wow. Like, the ghost is real. Like a for heaven. beautiful baby. And like, there was a little pink bow on her hair yeah, and everything. Yeah. And uh, so I had a lot of friends and family come in and take pictures. And I was just really open about it. I'm like, well, I want to celebrate that I had this beautiful baby. And mm-hmm. so C-sections are hard. Like that yeah. was a real, so there was a lot of emotion. There was a lot of trauma to my physical body. Yeah. At the same time, there was just this like wrenching, how am I going to do this? Because I, I might get emotional if I say this, but like because of the stuff with Dave and because of my own trauma in my life and being a college student and trying to figure and the shame from the church and all of the things that were kind of swirling, um, when I was in the operating room and I heard her first cry and my mom was right there with me and you're like strapped like this. They call it the crucifix position. That's what oh, the nurse said. Gosh. She's like, yeah, I know. There's like levels of meaning to that. And um, cause I literally felt like I will never ever do a sacrifice as great as this. I can't imagine anything yeah. greater. And so when she, when her first cry came out, I instantly was like, it was like paradox. It was like, that is the most beautiful thing I have ever heard. And this is the worst moment of my life because that beautiful thing is going away. So it's simultaneous, like, oh my gosh, that's my daughter. Oh my gosh, she's not like, so it was this like bitter the sweet, take yeah, like they just converged into this tension. And Isn't it weird how two things can be true at once. Yes. It's horrible and it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I just started on this like recently. Oh, where me I'm, like, too. You can be happy, but also be grieving. You can yes. be excited for this person, yes. but also be like, why didn't I win? Yeah. You know? And it's yeah. all valid. It's all yeah. valid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was just sitting with that. And then I finished the letter to her the last night in the hospital. And, and so she still has it. She's got this copy of the letter. And literally, tears are falling. Yeah. Oh. It's probably like smudges. And it's cute. It's like, it's like, <laughs> 
frilly and embroidered oh, my scrap. It was it's so like cool. hand stitch. And it's like I just really crafted it's that. You're like, what is this word? Like, like you're trying remember to remember those cutting right. photo yes. outfits? Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. yes. yes. Cute lace. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. she went all out. I was so crafty back then. Oh my gosh. Gosh. It was it was so, yeah. oh scrapbook or something was it scrapbook? Scrap 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 but like I, my mm-hmm. sister's wedding album is like the quilted yeah really yeah, nice. yeah yeah everywhere yeah I was like well I don't have anything else to do while I'm pregnant I'm just gonna make this so anyway yeah so that's that's that was the placement um it ripped me up I was catatonic with grief I went to my grandmother's afterwards to convalesce and my milk was coming in and I was regretting everything but I actually also had a very I mean the human part of me was regretting it right yeah. the spirit part of me was like oh, wow like you did you did a noble thing and and I and I knew like I knew in my heart of hearts that that's what she was this was not I was not in control I yeah. really to this day believe she was I don't know if that so she so she, she like said I want, even I want to come through you and this person named Dave <laughs> yes yeah I need this particular genetic combination. So you two get together. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to have this soul experience. Which that's going to totally kill have. both of us. Yeah. Destroy us. Because really, I, I'll get to that in a minute. There's a lot there. But, um, but at the same time, I, I was human and I was hurting and I was devastated. And I was like, I can't go on one more minute. I have. So... This is really bad. I, those of you who are watching don't that are birth moms don't do this. But I, I got to a point. Well, we I knew where they lived, <laughs> and when she was three weeks old, I was driving around and I was spiraling in grief, and I just found myself pulling into their driveway, and this is like nighttime. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and yeah, so Susan answered, and as soon as she got a look at me, she's like, oh. Just getting ready to put her down. Do you want to? Like, okay. And like, that's so, like, that's just not my typical. I was not myself. I was not well, thinking of the. Well, brief, you're not. Yeah. Not and I didn't, I didn't really have a support system. I had a therapy, you know, I had somebody that's kind of counseling me, but I didn't, like, my parents weren't there. My sisters weren't there. I didn't really have, like, it affected my friendships. Like, I really, truly felt alone. So I just needed that touch point. I needed to ground into her. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I went upstairs to the nursery and there was a little lamp on and I sat in the rocking chair and I fed her a bottle and I stared at her for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I know because newborns are like, you're amazing. I was just like, you being there is Well, amazing. I think it's like you co-regulate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, so it's like, when you're going, like when she was pregnant, when I was pregnant, yes. like when she was in the hospital, I did not hear her cry one time. And Susan and I stayed in contact after they brought her home. She's like, so messed up. Yeah. And, and I really think. My mom like, shares the story of like from that, that I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. Like horrible. And then you came over that night and she told you, you needed to get like, that had to be it. Mm-hmm. And then she said, from that point on, I was like a different baby. Mm-hmm. She felt like I was able to move past that mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. That's what they say happens to whales. Actually, when you separate mother and baby whales. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's it's the they were saying that like they had to take one out of the ocean to do so, like take it. Yeah. Like they were just crying. Like yeah. I could hear crying like mm-hmm. all and then in, in the enclosure. The primal crying. wound. Yeah. yeah. It's real. Prime. This, yeah. This is, this is something I know adoption research has come a long way. And I observed as many books as I could to try to prepare me. But you really, unless you're in your yeah. body with your milk coming in and the things and the scars and they had this, you know, stretch marks and then they had a C-section and it was 65 just... pound weight hanging over <laughs> here. Both of us. 65 pounds. With Pregnancy her. does <laughs> either of us no fevers. <laughs> I need yeah. to with my first. Okay. Oh, no, well, you know, I adopted some of my first You sweet. win. No, but I was like, I hate this. <laughs> Horrible. I'm like, the baby's only nine pounds. <laughs> you sure? It's not. At least you weighed like seven pounds, eight ounces. I remember. Oh, that's yeah, a good, perfect size. But you yeah, also feel like you lost a lot of weight, like after. Yeah, like, I, so I look so good. <laughs> yeah, so you put your pants on. You're like, yeah, nope. I don't. Oh, know. and actually, Dave did get to see you a few times because mm-hmm. he and I were like, he had a, yeah. We were kind of on and off That's just because we were like, I, I, bond, I, I, like I we had bonded. Yeah, that yeah. was yeah. Trump, absolutely yeah. that was So I think he just needed to ground into my experience because he felt some guilt around it. Didn't last long though, because he was off and running, and we totally parted ways. And he ended up getting remarried really fast. I actually met my husband when she was three months old. Oh, okay. 
Right. So um, where did so, you go? Cute little Jess. We met we Jess. at a emotion, get in touch with your emotions. Okay. Workshop called okay. Choices. And I was, he was a staff member and his mom was too. And I was going through it for the first time. And, and I got to confront my adoption experience. With, that's how I met my new husband. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. So he knew that about me from the get go. And, yeah. And like, there's a picture of you guys on your wedding day. And I'm what, a year old? Yeah. And you just, and we're all, yeah. I, like, he's always been so good. Yeah. So, so he, good to me. So I didn't, I wasn't really into him for a while, but he said he knew right away. And of course. So her mom was like, we're going to have a Christmas dinner. So you would have been June, July, August, September, seven months old. Okay. And she's like, we're, why don't you come bring your friend? Just have, we're going to have Christmas dinner. You can come see Wendy. And I was like, okay, well, I'll bring my friend, Jeff. She's like, okay. Are you dating him? No, we're just friends. So I take him with me and go over there. And he said, he saw a sight of me because he wiped snot and tears over this. Like <laughs> my husband was like, so, so non judgmental and mm, so into me so and true. like such a good, Anyway, I don't want to. No, he always he's, did. He's, he's just he's such a good guy. Yeah. And so he said when he saw me with Wendy, he's like, I finally got to see your vulnerability. I finally got to see. And he's like, I, I knew. Well, he already knew when you me before that. But he's like, that sealed the deal. I wanted you to be the mother of my children and all of that. So we got engaged two or three months after Christmas. And so the adoption itself just as an overarching thing is we've kind of just took the agency and that's why I don't want everyone to freak out because we decided the adoptive parents and myself that we would just do our own thing that we would say, okay, agency, thank you for bringing us to this point. We're going to stay in contact. So I've seen her multiple, multiple times over the years. I went to all of her Multiple doesn't even do it justice. Like it was we're like, talking... we just like kind of, it was you, I yeah, was, it was always like new year's. We always did New Year's was together. Was that the very beginning? Like, I mean, because you saw her at, what, three weeks and then seven months and then how did oh, no, I saw into... you, I saw her several times her first year. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, like, there was never any, like, oh, sure, it was always so open. So I never, there was never any. And I have to say, like, mom. it was her adoptive mom who was always advocating for the openness. It wasn't me, like, I want to see her when... Like she called me on her first day of kindergarten. She like I went to her baptism. Like she so wanted to make you yeah. feel a part of. Well, she yeah. realized how important the relationship between you and her, yeah, needed to be too, and like how much respect she had. Because I think sometimes adopted families, we've talked about this before, it's a little scary because you're like, yeah. what if they come back in? What if my daughter loves her more than me? And it's just, yeah. it's a little scary. And so, being an adoptive mom, I can, yeah, yeah. That's how I upset. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, that's, and I'm an adoptive mom as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She did. So yeah. I understand, like, and we you understand both sides. Yeah. I yes. do. I understand the infertility. I understand yeah. the birth mom thing. I understand the adopt. I don't understand the adoptee part of yeah. that because I'm not an adoptee, but I'm um, on the train back there. I know, right? But then I can make the decisions once I was yeah. like, 11, so 12, you and I could. If you haven't already gathered, she's very, like, headstrong, mm-hmm. just like me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it was so, there was no way. My family is not. not. No. So mm-hmm. our connection made me feel sane. Oh, okay. A lot of the times. Because I, um, we talked about this before, like, the nature versus nurture, and we could get all into that. But sometimes I just feel like this little island. I am my own island because... I am not like who raised me. I am my sister, Rebecca. We are like totally. North and South Poles. I am, yeah. And so growing up, especially once I had children, that was huge. She has like. three darling little boys. Oh, I have three boys too. <laughs> They're so young. <laughs> They're so cute. How old are they? I'm drowning. <laughs> Seven, <laughs> almost Ooh. five, two. Oh, bless you. They are. One has red hair, one has brown hair, and one has blonde hair. Oh they look nothing alike. Now, That's amazing. They look You're like I got all three. They are, and they are like I'm so tired. But they are literally everything, huh? And mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. There's a lot that goes into me having all boys and the father wound and the hurt I needed to heal around men. Yeah, that my boys are showing up and teaching me. So mm. they're just oh scrumptious. I never even thought about. That. Yeah, because. A lot of my but, like rejection yes. trauma is from men, mostly men, men. not my dad. Yeah, right? a little bit, but it, it had to been. It might have been something, and yeah. I don't think he did it consciously. But no. um, mm-hmm. but the things that my 
that it's funny. My 11 year old reminds me a lot of myself at 11 and I've yes. seen myself respond to him in ways that my mom did that weren't healthy. And, and like, you're oh, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Mirror. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. let's rewind. Yeah. Like, how do we change? That's how do I my this? middle boy. Ruin yes. it he is literally me. And it, yeah, it's painful almost. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. And I have three sons as well. And it's oh the gosh. same thing. Like they have really helped to temper. We were talking about this on the drive over with Sawyer, like coming through with a certain like Christ like they energy. They love you I'm so like, well. Like, it's just so sweet to have this happy gosh, masculine. Oh, like, so like delicious. Like unconditional. Like yeah. unconditional. Like the way they just come up to me and play with my hair and just, I'm like, wow. Like I get men now. Like I understand that. <laughs> like I get healthy men. There is goodness surrounding them. And like, I'm so excited to see well, them and that, grow and develop that. That primal wound. We should probably speak to that a little yeah. bit. Because it's there. I think I think it, it's going to be there with adoption, and I didn't really yeah. understand that completely until I was an adoptive mom. So okay, so I and nor did I understand that until I had children. Yeah, yeah. Like my yeah. whole childhood, I was like hunky dory, all good, whatever. And then when I had kids at home, it split it brought, you know, everything open. For me, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Kind of, it probably like rattled that part, the box in your brain yeah. that's been in the basement for yeah. you know absolutely twenty years. That you're yeah. like, oh yeah, let's open this up and see what's inside. Yeah, yeah. So, and I want you to get to like your experience with your family, but before I forget to say, so, so there's only barely two years between Wendy and the child, mine and Jeff's first child. Okay. So, so there's, so I have four bio kids and they're all two years apart. Okay. So, um, there's Wendy and then I have a son, Noah and a daughter, Savannah and then Sawyer and they all came pretty close. And then I went through, I knew that I had a, totally cool vision experience where I saw these two children, a boy and a girl, four miscarriages. Didn't They didn't come that way, and they ended up coming through two separate private adoptions very miraculously. So Eli is 11 now, and he said, you know, I'll learn yes. And Emma is nine, and um, their experiences, I'm, I got close to their birth moms, you know, and I was like, okay, even though their situations were way different than mine, I'm like, what would I have wanted right now, yeah. you know? And sometimes you need space. Like we're on hiatus with Eli's birth mom right now because there just needs to be space there. And that was her call um, and my call. But yeah, it's, I want her to get to her experience because she has a, a beautiful way of sharing things. Um, my, my, my grief has been layered. It's been complex and layered. And so just when I think I like reached this like level of acceptance with it, then something else will come in for me to look at and sit with that. Like wild horses could not keep us away from each other because we have a super strong connection that just is naturally there. Mm -hmm. um, that it's more like I'm her big sister. I would say like yeah, yeah. Like can I? I know I don't get to tell her what to do. So you know, there's. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was like I'm like I kind of feel like your aunt. He's like, well, I don't see you like that, and I was like, well, maybe we could get to that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. but he's also like, it was really hard when I first met you. He's like, I'm so drawn to you, but like also I felt bad for my mom. Yeah, because I'm like, how do I? How do I, how can those two exist? Yes. Yeah. can be true. And so people, yes. should that be my new bumper sticker? Yes. Life motto. Yes. Kay. Holding tension between two. But I'm opposing opposite. Too. If we should create a word for, instead of saying birth mom. Yeah. I know. I don't but, really like that word. Do you know what I mean? Because like, birth mom makes it sound like, because mom is usually comes with someone caring for you, I think, over time. I don't yeah. Know. So I'm just wondering if birth mom, that needs to be something we, we need, need to free in it. Do you want to know something cool bed, though? Nice like birth. her thirtieth birthday is falling on Birth Mother Day. Oh, I'll this, it. this year. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look at you. You know the day. Already. Well, yes. we just talked about it yes. with yes. Lorraine, the social yeah. worker. Plus, my five year old's birthday is on the twelfth. Yeah. But oh, May yeah. babies, they're delicious. Yes. They. Oh my gosh. I love May. Yes. May's a good month. Taurus. Yes. Taurus yes. energy. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we we kind of and Wendy just kind of growing grew up knowing me. Yes. Yeah, you know, so yeah. I didn't know any. There was different. never, I had yeah. never known any different. And especially with my older sister being adopted, hers was not the same, not good. And hers is still not great. And hers was very closed and very different. So that was kind of hard because hers would be, because ours was always so positive. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't think, you know, I would cry half the time after I left the house. <laughs> Nobody knew. <laughs> So yeah, I get to see you get in the car. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> but, yeah, and then once you get like fifteen, like then we can text. And we, yeah, I was so 13, 13. I remember like we've always been in contact. I remember your mom saying to me one time, 
and I never forgot it. I have this feeling, and you were probably like 10. She's like, I have this feeling that when Wendy gets to be a teenager, that older, like that you're going to be able to help her with something. I yeah. just cannot. Yeah. And that. And it and it's true. Like my island, you you take your boat to my island mm-hmm. and you make me feel not as islandy. <laughs> and like there's something, yeah, that that's so strong. You don't realize like that mm-hmm. connection there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We do. And we're even s- we've even like I no shortage of work. I was a child bride. Shout out to that 18 year old Wendy. <laughs> my husband and I are still together. So I didn't say that. I joke about it. Yeah, I was 18 too. Yeah, she was 18. Really? Yeah. I'm part of that. I was yeah. 25. It's like yeah. embarrassing actually. Years. But I'm like, uh, well, especially when I tell people my age and then how long I've been married, like 12 years, they're like doing the math. I'm like, yep. I I'll like, say, I, I know. know. Yeah. I, like, like, I was there. I know. So okay. I, I have been thinking about 30. I, that was yeah. when I, 29 was when I had my, adopted my last child. So oh, yeah. I was like 25 to 29. Yeah. And then I was. I adopted um, Eli when I was 43 and Emma when I was 45. Yes. Which actually makes me crazy. It's crazy time. Crazy. I could. Crazy. You couldn't date me. No, I mean, I know my family's on the 41, and she's like, I cried. Yeah. And I sat by the pool and ate french fries and drank Coke every day. <laughs> and I was like, uh, thank you. Like, I don't know what to do with that ever You like understand why pioneers had him at like a fresh 19, because yes. then it's a young woman's yes. game. Yes. Or even 60. Yeah. They're like popping the kids out because they're it ready. Is. Yeah. It is a young yeah. woman's game. I think so. But even I w- I've been due to my nature, um, I'm very independent and I always have been. And so for me to just be like, yeah, I'm getting married. I'm going to freaking do it. And, you know, like, I'm going to make it last. So even <laughs> she's like, oh, I was cringing so hard. So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But not because of anything to do with her husband. Mm-hmm. Just because getting out married at 18, like, that's just long. never a great idea. Yeah. But well, um, not not always never. But <laughs> there's all those people who are like, are just those people. Yeah. Like my sister got married at 20 and it's like she was the, that person. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not, it, which it, it ended up being amazing. Yeah, he's so great. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. But I was, I didn't know him, so I was just yeah. kind of feeling really protected. And- yeah. But the bottom line is I feel like I've always just made my own decisions, whether it was that or whatever. And with you, I've always made my own decisions too. I don't feel like I take permission from anyone. But I also feel like I'm extremely sensitive of what I do tell my adoptive mother regarding mm-hmm. her too. Just because you don't want to hurt her feelings Very and, much so. or, and vice versa or not no, so much. you don't get, well, sometimes I'll really say something like, did you know this happened? And she'll be like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I had no clue, you know, but, um, no, I, I never want to hurt my adoptive mother. Of course. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. And I don't want to hurt her either. No, she's the most, um, she's a great lady, not like a mean bone in her body and our, I, she's very insecure about our relationship because I didn't. I don't know. I don't know how much to get into. What? What do you want me you to say? say what do you want me to? What? No, give me a front. Get into it. Get into yeah, it. I can say what That's you want. Don't don't hold back. Um, it's it's it's. I I want to be like respectful, but like I said, I have just was different, and I am still different. And there's um, kind of like a lot of hurt and pain and rejection on my side about being different. Not that. They intended to make me feel that way. Um, but sometimes that just that just happens. And I also think they didn't understand the complexity of adoption when they decided to adopt. I think they thought it was like, again, it would be a white picket fence. Like, sure, there would be some hard times, you know, but it wouldn't be you wouldn't be battling with maybe a certain set of genetics or a certain personality that sometimes just is really incompatible at times yeah. with your own. And like, there's going to be that butting of heads. And so I think that as of now, I'm pretty honest with them about it. And they're honest with me and their relationship is, it's good. It's fine. But um, yeah, we're just super, super different. Are they just introverted and just quiet or like what, how, how do you mean different? I mean, I know how you are. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to picture like um, it would be better kind of introvert and they're much older. Okay. And I think growing so, up, uh, you know, years older than mine. Okay. Yeah. So growing up, that was kind of hard because I feel like I was, um, generationally, that was really hard. Like even now to this day, we'll still have like such different views. Or like, dad, you can't say that word anymore. Like that's not socially acceptable. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I say that to my own girl, like, mom, don't. Um, I do that with my own. Mom. Yeah, I mean, there's some things totally. that like, I love them. You're like, I can't say that. But like religion, politics, 
um, obviously I'm very different on. And if we're being quite frank, I mean, my adoptive father has, I don't think he realized he has a biological child that he fathered before my sister and I, um, and the not accepting, he, he feels different towards the adoptive yes. versus the, and you feel that. Yes, very much so. And with because, your sister? Yes. Okay. So yeah. You guys have talked. Oh, yeah. It's hilarious. All day long. We'll be sending reels or memes. That's just like, you yeah, know, my trauma, she trauma. Trauma. I mean, she's actually in therapy right now. Shout out to you, Becca. I mean, she's finally dealing with it because we both, I, um, until my husband and Jeff, I've really never had a male in my life like me ever. I mean, I'm too loud. I'm too this. I'm too much. I'm she's extra. I'm too extra. Good um, anyway. Yeah, and I, I've I've essentially <laughs> been rejected by most men or boyfriends or whatever. So that's going back to my sweet little boys who have no choice but to accept me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and love me. And love me. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think I needed this path and I've learned so much like it has literally transformed the way I parent because I thought everything was okay until I had my first and I remember looking at him and being like I can never say those things to you that were said to me or vice versa or do those things because like how could you do that like it really it makes me emotional because it was a lot of pain but it's also a lot of good too two things are true so yeah well, and everyone has like good people, like bad things happen to good people, yeah. good things happen to good yeah. bad people, like all yeah. kind of this spectrum of totally stuff. And I think they were just from a generation, there wasn't a lot of education on potential outcomes of, you know what I mean? Like whether it be mental illness that could run in families or certain, you know, whatever that may be, I don't think they were equipped to deal with any of that. What is their age? What are their ages? I'm just wondering. Oh, God, in general. 70. 374 my okay. father so they're like my, my parents my gener my parents yes. generation so yeah well so, I talked about yeah it was my family yeah. so yeah and my parents so yeah and but my youngest up. sister's 22 yeah yeah, yeah. and it was <laughs> good but there's just a lot of um there was just like a lot of instability yeah a lot of moving a lot of jobs um financial resources just a lot of things like that so yeah that's pretty much it. But I always knew this sounds like such a Debbie Downer. I don't want well, to don't sound like a Debbie I'm, Downer. Yeah. Well, but also, I think it's so important if you're adopting, like, know your freaking crap, right? Okay, but you, can I tell you? Yes, you can. When <laughs> growing, crap, up, yes. growing up with my parents, some of the same stuff you're talking, I went through, and I wasn't adopted. You're so right. But I'm just saying, my parents didn't have their shit together when they had me. No, yeah. you're, I know. So it's like, it's, un mind. and then, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So there's, the, there's some things that, and when I adopted my kids, we didn't have all our shit together. In fact, I think that I'm still learning I my know. shit. Which is so, terrifying. I mean, and trying to work through, I mean, I'm, I'm I just started therapy at 41. Yeah. And I yeah. my oldest is 14. So for 14 years, totally. he's had like an unhealed And you're putting and your 11. Yes. Old, yes. And yeah. 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 Well, they yeah. see me, yeah. Through, and I guess I should clarify: it's not just that. It would it, it would be more of specific comments made towards the adoption. And seeing that, I a quote: and "We're lucky yes. that we adopted you." Okay, say so I hate, or you're lucky that yeah. you got adopted. See, I hate Correct. That. So I hate I'm saying that. there's things throughout the years. Yes. I don't want to be too specific no. because and you know. But wrong. I'm telling yes, you, there has been never. specific. Um, they shouldn't adopt it then. Yeah, honestly, yeah, that, should have, I know, but your mother, didn't, your I, mother didn't correct. That way. And I, I literally think they just didn't know. I think they thought they could just adopt these two children and put them in matching dresses, and like it would be hunky dory, leave it to Beaver. I don't think they realized like so much that comes with yeah. that. Um, and also, like they have their shared trauma that they never have healed. Yeah. And your because that generation does not no, and like talk about it. Everyone is doing their flipping best yeah. with their level of awareness they possess yeah. and just because their level of consciousness or awareness is different than mine um doesn't make it necessarily wrong it's just yeah. different and i literally think i was born with like my eyes open of just like 
questioning and wondering, challenging, you're challenging. challenging. Like, and I was always labeled as bossy and manipulative. And um, I was never the quiet, demure, sweet, feminine daughter that they should be. I don't know. But also, oh, there was a lot of gender I wasn't disappointment. Of, I was, yes, I was quiet. But you're not now. I'm not no. now. But a lot of people <laughs> don't, don't become this. But when, <laughs> but when you have children, yeah, you kind of have to come out of yeah. that quiet, especially when you have to fight for that. Advocate for that. Sing, yeah. Sing no, no, yeah. It, it, my mom always said, like, if I'm not going to advocate for you, who will? Yeah. Until you're old enough and you have to advocate yes. for yourself because nobody's going to do it. Yeah. I yeah, still yeah. do with some of them yeah. because some of mine have problems and I still have to be the advocate. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Wendy and I are, do you guys know what human design is? I've heard the word. But. So we're both three five projectors, which is super intense. <laughs> like I don't even know this. I, I mean, mean I, I know what it means, means but not it's just um, more. As I as I feel into you know, kind of like this disruptor energy. Like she kind of has it. I have it. Like we're challengers of the status quo, and you know, born into a certain system where we were, there were all these expectations and ways to be compliant and different things. And it took me longer to rebel than it did her in terms of like finding her voice and this is me and stuff. And she's done a lot of work with that. Um, and it's interesting, like, <laughs> um, yeah. So when we, like today, we're both, we both wore. I noticed you were both. We did not plan shirt. this. Oh, we're <laughs> and then like our necklace, like we're just kind of like, we have the same exact. We do. Preferences. Well, do almost exactly. That she has been able to find her voice because of the yes. relationship you've had with. Absolutely. You. I, oh yeah. Like, How often do I come to you and I'm like, I'm feeling crazy. Am I crazy? Yeah. I kind of wait. We have this Marco Polo thing that goes on and yeah what her mother said was literally prophecy. Like there have been things that she probably could only process through me. And it's helped me to kind of ground back into, okay, she needed that soul experience. She needed that, that family constellation. I needed that experience. And, and it kind of facilitated our evolution really. Your growth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so now, yeah, like, <laughs> but our ad- adoption so much different now. Like, we have internet and we have yeah. books and, and we have podcasts and social media. Podcast and and social media. Yeah. I think parents have like a different understanding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like, especially my generation, we're all self-proclaimed trauma energy breaker. I mean, everyone, we're all gurus and we're all trying to figure it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's like a different time. Yeah. Truly from when. Yeah. We talk from about when it too was. much now where they did talk about it at all. Yes. 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 I am very new. You got trauma all the time in everything now, though. I know. That's what I'm saying. Your trauma, you hear like all, there are all these like buzzwords yes. that I was like, if I hear that one more I know. Time, I know. I'm going to lose my mind. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Everybody's got their own. But the, the, the cool like, oh, thing about know. like, oh, yeah, <laughs> the cool thing about kind of what's evolved here is just, um, you know, she, we have, we, we have these parallel experiences. I don't know what else to call them. Like, mm-hmm. like she's living it, you know, she's 25 years younger than me, but she's having a very similar experience to something I'm having. And so she'll send me a message and I'm like, That's weird. Oh, okay. So some of the stuff you guys had to go through together. You needed I, each other to bounce off I, that I think so, to yeah. get through yeah. on your journey. Yeah. yeah. And you couldn't have done that if you were in the same household, per Maybe se. Probably not. No, probably. You probably hate me right now. You think? No. <laughs> it, I mean, <laughs> you're in the home. It's Yeah. No, I, and here's the thing. Like, my husband has said, I would have totally buried you. Because part of my thing was like, who's going to want to marry me? So oh for gosh, for the birth mother, it's very layered in shame. Yeah, yes. shame, guilt. So every time Happiness. I'm around people that know about this experience, I have to work. It's like a spiritual practice. I have to come back to center, mm-hmm. know who I am, know like why I chose what I chose, and um, like I went to when we were at her wedding, um, <laughs> at the reception. Um, so she has, you know, obviously like all her family there and extended yeah. and everybody yeah. knows that, you know, I'm the birth mom, but she was so courageous. She just grabbed the microphone at the lunch and was like, Hey, you guys probably already know that I'm adopted. Well, here's my birth mom, Sheree and her husband, Jeff. And like, she just, she just has this uncanny ability to like, 
put things to you know to relax. call it out yeah, yeah. Put, put things to rest throw it out there um but then i was like ooh, because it's going to come back to the dirty mm-hmm. secret and it's yeah not, and it, that's it brings it up right. That's so, kind of why we want to do this. Yeah. Because take this not on. Not it's like a trigger. Like you say that, you're like, oh my gosh. And all of a sudden you're reverting back yeah. to yeah. the, the feelings. Of the or when you're pregnant. It's yeah. 24 year old. Yeah. And there are people that would like to keep me there. Oh, Let me just tell you. Yeah. There yeah. are people. And so I have to just be like, okay. You know, and I'm actually writing a book about my experience. It's been really therapeutic to like put all these yeah. pieces together. Yeah. But I feel like now, um, I'm I'm kind of transcending the like what are people thinking about me and I will mention also like I went straight into right after I placed I went straight into working with your mom and uh, other birth moms I started a support group for birth moms I started going into high schools and juvenile detention centers and junior high schools and and I was just like sharing my story and sharing my story I think in an effort to pay penance for my mistake Mm. um I look at I just have so much compassion for that younger me who just really was just like, I really am a good person. I promise. And like I was doing church firesides and all these things just to make myself worthy, you know? And, and so I, I have a lot of compassion for, for that process for myself. It's what I chose to learn, you know? And, um, you know, but we have a really strong connection that like, like I said, you know, we, we can start talking and it's just like, but we chose yeah. this. That's the bottom line. We did we choose it. We're back not to like, victims of anything. Yeah. No, no. This, this is what we this chose. This is what we chose. This is the life that we wanted yeah. to craft. This is these particular sorts of dynamics yes. and, um, you know, yeah. So well, she chose her adoptive family. Yeah. yeah that really, really literally that. Like, I want that. Yes. Yeah. I want yeah. that. Yeah. And it was so clear. And yeah. I'm like, Hey, and she, just, uh, yeah, so she's like, okay, this is going to, you probably were saying, what's going to get me to where I want to be in the, totally. in my and back side. I don't right, yeah, right. know what that even looks like right yes. now. Like, no, uh, that I type said, like, have I made any <laughs> progress <laughs> at all? I you have, have, no, so you'll you never. Because I'm like still like, yeah, who am I? <laughs> but I would love, like, this is going to be great in five and 10 years to even be like, okay, this is why I had to do this. And this yeah, is why yeah. I got married when and had my first kid then. And well, sometimes I think I, I used to, I don't anymore, but sometimes in some scenarios, I'm like, ignorance would be bliss oh my gosh if yeah. you didn't have because yeah. constantly in my brain i'm like thinking my eternal perspective of yeah. where i want to be and what i want to it's do well be but uh, but i like but you know i'm thinking but i'm like sometimes i would n- not like to think about yes <laughs> about that and just not and just deal just you know deal. yeah yeah like at the moment and you're like okay i have like i'm gonna look at one yeah. year ahead yeah. yeah i'm gonna look like forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and so on yeah yeah. And yeah see all of those things that you guys have gone through create gets the work done for well, you here. yeah and you know yes. one other thing that i think is important to bring up is she looked up her birth father uh, it's like a joke i'm sorry oh my gosh like, i know wow. literally like he <laughs> oh my gosh let me you just guys, tell you so he's he is like probably 50 and no, i don't no, 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 right he's after like covid he's 60 now i, I thought you know what it's been <laughs> 30, 25, 25. Maybe years. he's changed. No. Yeah. She's like, listen. No, well, because I, I, I was yeah. kind of like trying to protect yeah. her yeah. from, like, I don't think I like really said anything bad about him because I didn't want yeah. her to think that she was part bad. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I resemble definitely... him. I have a lot of his well, traits. Mm-hmm. No? Okay. Um, He was loud and stuff, but no. Okay. So he is a narcissist. I think okay. I called him like yeah. right after COVID. Mm-hmm. So go ahead. Yeah, I called him like right after COVID. <laughs> I'm like, I was going through a lot with my adoptive father at the time. So you felt Still... rejection from your adoptive father and from your birth father. Multiple yeah, she times. had a father. Yeah, that was year. a really fun year for me. Yeah. Shout out to 2020. You didn't follow my <laughs> so just used to um, disappear. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just going to call it. Like, because this could be healing. I was in the throes of it. I think I had like a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And I just, <laughs> I think I just wanted someone to love me. Like, yeah. Like, that felt so good to the ego, right? Um, and my sister had actually reached out to her birth father a few months before. And it was disastrous. I'm talking, she hunted down his mother and his sister, and they had no idea she even existed. Oh. Yeah. 
Both his friends. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, he literally cyber text being like, no medical information. Do not contact me or my family ever again. And oh, so I'm wow. like, I got And this. you're not going to do it that way. No, no. But I'm always like, I, if anything, I am a good sister. Shout out to, I'm a pretty good sister. And so I'm like, I'm going to contact my birth father and see, like, see what the cat drags in. So I think I just emailed him and he was like, is this Wendy or something? And I was like, yeah. And so one day I went down in the basement. It was nap time. And I called him. And we were on the phone for an hour and it was literally, she was texting with us, him for an hour straight. I'm so healthy. My life is so good. I'm in Miami on the 52nd floor with the beach view. I'm so happy. Like he didn't ask didn't one he didn't even, single didn't he thing. even say something like blood means nothing to me? Yeah. He told me specifically just because I had you blood, blood's not family. But like, first of all, you didn't have, yeah. You <laughs> were like, like blood. Blood. Blood, that means nothing to me. Cool. And I was like, okay, uh, is, is, and then he just, again, I'm so in love. I have one child, which is bullshit because he has how many? Like, yeah. if blood four. goes nothing to him, what happened yeah. to his other two kids? I don't know. Okay. So <laughs> he went through how great his life was. And I just was like, I was literally okay. like laughing, crying, laughing. And then finally I just said, I'm ready to wrap this up. Is there any medical? And he was like, no, I'm so healthy. And I'm like. <laughs> I am so glad to hear that, Dave. <laughs> like, I don't care. Because um, it was just awesome. It was literally all about him. She's like, we dodged a bullet. Yes. <laughs> I got <laughs> off the phone. And I, I sat her and Marco and I'm literally laughing. I was like, so that, that ship has gone and sailed. And it really was more rejection. But I think it was also, good closure for both. It of was us. really good closure. Yeah. We like cut yeah. that bond. It's like, well, not only has he not changed, he's gotten ten times worse. Yeah, now. yeah. So let's just. I know sometimes it is when you like don't know. You're like, not that you're thinking like, oh, I should have stayed with him, but you're like curious. Yeah. Maybe he's yeah. Done, yeah. done better with yeah. Me, I, I, I didn't even know she was going to do that. So I'm like, <sighs> yeah. I hope this goes the way that I wanted it for you. Yeah. I wanted him to be like. I'm reformed. I'm so humble yeah. now. And so, yeah. But instead, he just threw me under the bus again. Like, of course. It was so. beautiful. Yeah. Well, so I'll just say that. But, the, but, all right. Like, they don't go through the trauma. Like, my birth, the birth father didn't. I'm like, I went through the whole pregnancy, the whole adoption, all of that. He literally, nothing in his life changed. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. To be a man. No scars on the outside mm-hmm. or. They, no, he was like, but they are going to break I believe yeah. in karma, though. Like, it's going to come back. Yeah. Either there's some stuff inside that they, inside that they haven't dealt with that has to be out with. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And like, well, I, I'm not I wish you bad things, but totally. also, like, karma could come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, nice, right? But that should I have some say health karma. Yeah. I'm just, I think I'm both saying that. Not to have karma. Just like, you know, I don't know. Just like, like, what kind of harm? Just a little, like, slip disc in the back, but what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what is your level of? <laughs> so she's on my, she's, she's, mostly, where are you going? Mostly it's literally like, I want, like, I want him to feel what I felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. That, that's the, that's, that's the kind of time I did not Yeah, and, and, and like, I actually came to acceptance that he's not capable. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yes. And so I'm like, well, can I just share? This is just coming up. Like, I had this dream once because I do, I dealt with the ramifications of him my relationship with him well after I placed her. It was not healthy. It was codependent, all these things. And, and he was quite mean to me. Narcissist. being honest. Yeah. yeah. And so um, one night I had a dream. And I think you're about 10 years old. And in this dream, I was sitting on this park bench looking out at this ocean. And I was all by myself. I was just like vibing on the ocean. And the sun was kind of going down. And all of a sudden, it looked like there was somebody walking on the water towards me. And I... Then I discerned it was a man, and then I was like, oh, my gosh, that's Dave, Earth Father. And I just stiffened, and, like, my heart was racing and everything. And then he regressed in age, like, as he got closer and closer. He was younger. I was like, he him as a By the time he was right here, he was a toddler, and he was going like this for me to pick him up. And I picked him up, and I held him, and and I heard him say, this is all I ever wanted. So he had the mother wound, right? Mother wounded, so... We were the kind of like casualties of his trauma and getting abused and his friend and him not. He looked up his birth mom and she rejected him, didn't want anything to do with them. And then his, so anyway, her, her, her son Zeke Mm -hmm. is that child that was in that top. Like they looked, I know. And you know what? My Zeke is my, (laughs) you're learning. He is my learning. And it's cause he's what I need. He's going to teach me and he's what I need to learn. And he's what I need to know. Just this cute little angelic blonde, 
He is so, so yummy. cute. Oh. And that was the child, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And then, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just sit with that. He, this is his experience in yeah. this lifetime. And I could be all like vengeance and stuff. Cause I really did want him to die multiple times. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like I, I had to go too. through all th- through all of this, and he gets to go away and buy a new truck and wipe that thing out. Yeah. And it's like you got to sign a little thing, and you're off and running, you know. And I have the scars and everything. So, but then I keep going back to how he felt when he held her, yeah. and this little moment in time where I got to see the real like vulnerable, the vulnerable mm-hmm. yeah, and the yeah. like, not the narcissism or anything. It was just like, yep, this. And so, yeah. For whatever reason, like she needed to come through that gene pool. I needed to look like me, Dave, and all of that. It was never meant to last. But I think the hardest part, um, because I have studied quite a bit about birth mother grief and also kind of being an adoptive mom and seeing the grief that my birth mother, my adoptive kids' birth mothers have gone through. Um, everyone handles it so differently. Yeah. Oh, totally. And so my coping me- mechanism was, I'm going to learn everything I can. I'm going to go on a speaking circuit. Like, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that was my way um, that I have met. I have met birth mothers, and I'm sure you guys have too, like, well into their elderly years. And they have not Ill all with it. really felt it. Really, really felt it. And I just, I think that was probably something that I'm grateful that I did, is I really allowed myself to feel all of that grief. Just bring it on, like... Like I said, catatonic grief. Um, and then it would come and go and come and go. And now that we've kind of settled into this, like, she's successful. She's a master esthetician. She's a great mom. Well, she's beautiful. You. She is a great husband. Like, she's got a great head on her shoulders. Like, okay, you know, it worked. <laughs> like, it was like, you know, like, yeah. it was like, I was totally never at this whole time. Yeah. I really wanted her to have a great life. And yeah. she does. I do. She I does. really freaking do. Yeah. Yeah, I have chills right now. Yeah. yeah. It took, it took, yeah, it was. Well, that's all you want. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you want kids. them to be happy. You want yeah. them to do what lights them up. And and we're going to do that. And we're going to Italy. We are. Oh we're, we're going to like end. next month. We literally, we were in, we're like, we haven't planned or booked anything. <laughs> all we have is our flights. We're just going to shop. And hotels. Eat, pray, love. We have is it hotels. just the two of you? And my daughter, yes. Savannah. And you talk. Oh, yeah. yeah. that was fun. Fun. She's oh, 25. Yeah. She's 25. And um, she's beautiful like Wendy. Yeah. And they're getting to know each other and establish their sisterly connection. So you'll yeah. totally have that bond once oh, you're yeah. out yeah. 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 Because you spend time in a hotel with someone. Yeah. And you get real high <laughs> fast. Share a bad cuddle. Yeah. yeah exactly. But we like to talk about deep consciousness stuff. And oh, yeah. so my daughter said I was getting in her degree. So we're just planning this big trip. And what do you sell out behind? How long are you got for? A week. A week. Ten days. Yeah, it's like I had to wait till school is out because you know May as a mom, it's a marathon, y'all. Field <laughs> day, volunteering, what birthday? You know what I mean? Don't even get me started. I'm like, I know, I'm like, oh, I know. Gosh. So I'm like, we were all like, we have to wait until the end of May till all our littles are out of school. So we're just gonna go like that first week of summer. We're literally leaving the, the last day of the kids' school. Yeah, great. Right. We're yeah. we're doing like, it. sorry. So we're literally going to sit on the Amalfi Coast and. I don't know what we're going to do. Ta- it we're- doesn't matter. You'll be on the yeah, coast. Just, like, yeah. uh, doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. It's good. We're excited. Go skinny dippy. <laughs> you're going to take it easy is what you're going to do. Yeah. Aww. Well, you please make sure right. that I do. Yeah. I'll try. I'll try. I don't know how you're going to get her to die. Yeah. Just chill. <laughs> take her cell phone or something. <laughs> Maybe bring a Xanax. <laughs> just crush it up. And it in the <laughs> don't tempt us. <laughs> just like, mom, take it. Take it. Go take it. Do you call her Cherie or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I said mom again. You did. It's okay. Can I tell you guys this sad story that I just thought of? Yeah. Okay. So I used to do a lot of birth mom panels with mm-hmm. the agency. And so that by this time I had three other kids and Sawyer, my youngest, who's now 22, was like a baby. And Noah, my son that I had after her, he, um, he knew that I, he knew this whole thing, right? And I think there's something to birth moms, the next child they have after the one they placed, it's almost like they're really attuned to your, what their birth brought to you in terms of healing, but also some of that trauma that's residual. And my son Noah is really, really intuitive. So anyway, he's probably like five years old and I was um, taking Sawyer with me to go to this birth parent panel because he was nursing and Noah was like, don't go. And I'm like, why? I don't want 
Like they could swing her to another family. Oh, oh sad. God. You're like, uh, oh, you're attached. I'm Jeez. like, oh my gosh, no, I'm not doing that anymore. No, 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 no. no. Oh, sad. So you know, yeah. you never know as a birth mom. There, and I think there's still a lot of conversations I need to have with my older kids. You know, um, but they've always taken it in stride. Yeah, you know? yeah. But it's also just this thing of like they have felt into what that was for me and um yeah so i actually like annihilated them with love and kisses and squishes and that's what birth moms do after they place a baby from what i've read and probably your with your experience too yeah. like like you over like you over there's this this lingering like oh life is so precious and like mm-hmm. you know and so i think I, I like i did attachment parenting and they never had bottle scripts or pacifiers my god like i was just always just like they're like, they just, like nurture these little yeah. babies yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i think i did that with adoption yeah you're, like, just so so freaking you're like I, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I so was was such I a know. miracle Wait, that they yeah. got there i was staring at him the whole time i'd be like <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly oh, i was always so checking on that i was like well and then okay, there's the, the, the most beautiful thing you've ever seen i know and you're like, and, and I love this just person like, so much. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's like unreal, the dose. Yeah. Well, so, and how you can be so frustrated with them and love them so much. And you're like, oh, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I have that with my younger, my boy. See, you guys have boys. Kids do you have? I have four. Oh, okay. I just have the four. Yeah. So I have oh, two. Just the four. four. No. I know, just the four. That's, That's a lot. lot. I'm like, three just feels like 300. My, my, mom, has, <laughs> my mom has 10. Oh, okay. my God. So you're like, just four. Wow. So are they all? Um, Kathy, the, uh, how's the youngest one of the ten? Twenty-two. Okay, that's right. So wow. she's yeah. I'm the oldest. They are not all biological, though, right? No, eight no. Out only of the ten two adopted. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I know, I'm, I'm biological, and then and then your sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the rest are, but yeah, all the rest. And I got really close to your family. They yes. were like my second family. Yes. When I was going through all of that, it was such a she blessing. Did. And Kathy is like. A soul sister to me. I just love her so much. Yeah, you would come. I remember we used to watch movies downstairs and stuff. <laughs> we would oh, yeah. 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 And I used to watch the like, Father of the Bride. Like, oh what was, what were we watching then? I don't even remember. I don't Either what we were watching. Early 90s. It could have been. It could have been. Early 90s. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. into all that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ten. It but no, we that. were very, like, we're pretty open now when yeah. people ask us about adoption and. I mean, there is that little stigma with the birth mom thing. Yeah. Like, and that's what we want to change. Honestly, I, it's yeah, not, like, it's, right. I, so. I'm okay with, like, as soon as my book comes out, too, like, everyone's going to know. But yeah. there is this one thing that happened. So um, I got asked to sit on a some kind of a panel with a state adoption thing. And a Deseret News reporter was there, and he asked if he could do a story. So he comes, and he meets with us, and you were probably six. Five or six. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I had my other two, I hadn't had my other third child yet, but I had my other two kids and, and the, you know, taking pictures and everything. And I had no idea that it was splashed, like a huge picture of me and you, and it was at her birthday party, splashed on the front page of the Deseret News on um, Mother's Day. And I go to church and I had, I didn't know it was on the front page. And literally people are looking at me like, like people had seen it, mm-hmm. yeah, and I just didn't know about it. And you're, yeah. and I was exactly. like, and then I had to go through this whole other level of like shame and what are mm-hmm. people thinking and da da da. And so that has come into you know that's the life of a birth mom. And I think just as soon as you own your own worthiness, and uh, like I had to take that scarlet letter off so many times, so. And just be like, nope, that's not who I am. That's not what I'm about. But it's also then not about you. It's about them. Like their perception of you exactly. is, doesn't have anything to do with you. Right. It's none of my business. No. Yeah. That's no, their not business. None of your business at all. No. And that practice is really hard if you're a sensitive person. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a very sensitive person and I like want everyone to get along and everyone to feel loved. Like no and stuff. It's like yeah. a people pleaser too. I, that's yeah. But I I'm a recovering too. people yes. pleaser, all of that. And very so, difficult to get rid of. It's just our personalities together and even separately are very like confrontational. Like we're going to challenge what you think is normal. We're going to challenge the status quo. Like we're, we're in a high, we are in a higher frequency with what we're learning here on this earth. And it just looks different. It looks different than your traditional, like you were saying, the white cricket fans, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I we don't want the white picket fence. We don't no. want the highs and the lows and the planets and the stars. <laughs> We're beyond the white. I don't want the worlds. I want yeah. the like media and then the. I'm done with the lows. Yeah, We're I done like the lows. lows. It's all the there. No, but I feel like I was going to adopt you. The only time that I was ever like, I'm. A, sometimes I talk about it. Sometimes I don't. But most people who know me obviously know. But the only thing I just don't do is when they say, "What's the freaking phrase?" So. You're How right. old were you when they gave you up? Oh, yeah. They gave they, you up. They played. Or your so real mom. That, yeah. Your so real those mom. all usually correct. Your like, real mom. Your real mom, mom like to birth mother or adopted mother, and then placed and taken. Those are you. Yeah. And then other than that, it's like, I don't, what people say is like, they're not trying to be rude. They, they just, just they don't just know. know. They, they just don't know. know. It's, and that's like with infertility. Had I've had yeah. sister-in-laws or friends with infertility, and sometimes I'm like, why did I say that? I that was so freaking rude and insensitive, <laughs> Wendy. And it's not, I'm just trying to actually connect with them yeah. and talk to them about it. And I'm saying the wrong thing. So I genuinely like whatever people say, it does not offend me. And they they're, they just want to know. They're just curious. Yeah. That's so like, sometimes I'll correct it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But then like always willing to talk about it and yeah. always willing to like learn and grow that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and a lot of people obviously don't know I'm a birth mom. And so they'll make comments about birth moms or they'll say, the different things and then i'll feel this rising in me and it's like you need to speak yeah you yeah. need to and help them. them and educate them and they're right? just like yeah. mortified oh yeah you, every time you're like oh my gosh i'm like yeah you would never there's probably so many birth moms that, that you've done yeah. and, and you that you have no idea because they have that stereotype of what they look like how they yeah. act and if they, they were a teenager them. i was yep. 25 years old yeah you know but and so just, we're all freaking learning we are we're just we are. all and we're all doing like you said we're all doing the best we can yes this seriously what we have you know yeah it sometimes sounds great sometimes it's yeah and we need to have a conversation about it yeah and not make it a dirty secret or anything yeah. and right. not ma- make people feel bad about a decision that they made yeah oh, and i always been open i with just my kids uh, with everyone i'll just be like oh yeah my adoptive son or like just casually i just tell people i have six kids yeah i used to just say five and now you're like probably six. like five years ago i'm like no, I have six kids. Yeah. I yeah. literally, like, I know that I'm not traditionally parenting yeah. her, but we have this, we, we, we kind of do have that dynamic sometimes. But I'm like, why am I hiding? Yeah. It's the, why yeah. Just do, what? what is that about? Like, it's not about society. Yeah. It's what I, you, it's your, it's protect you know, it's it myself. And so, yeah. So, and even Jeff, my husband says we have six kids, even though he's not her. Mm-hmm. My father. Yeah. Like, I wish, but I'm <laughs> he's so sweet. He is just goodness, huh? Yeah, he really Like, is. He, uh, he'll even text me on my birthday. Oh, cute. He's Shout always out. been like Shout that. out to my adoptive father, who um, doesn't remember my birthday sometimes. <laughs> but Jeff Aroni, he always has my back. So, he's <laughs> see, good. There, he loves It movies. shows up. And oh. he's uh, laughing all the time at your Marcos. Sometimes I let on listen. He's like, I know. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're like, we're there's the two of us. Yeah, there's two. Of us. I always know my brother or my brother, my husband and his dad sound the same, look the same, act the same. So when they're making fun of me, I'm like, I have three kids around sound. Why are you guys doing this? You shut up. You <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. So we're, I don't know. I mean, we're in a good integration place with all of us. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. But ups and flow come and we're ready for them, whatever they may be. And sometimes that's more space, sometimes that's less space. Well, I love your relationship. I love yeah. your dynamic. I think it's really great that you guys have had this really positive. I mean, not probably all positive, but like yeah. mostly positive experience sure. together. Yeah. And that you just have more family. You just have more people. Yeah, like so true. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, that's the bottom that's line. Fun, yeah. Like yeah. I went to Christmas or what was it? I went to Christmas Eve for the first time, maybe two years ago with your family. Oh, yeah. 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 And I was like, why don't I do this more? Like they're so good to me and. Why am I rejecting that when more people just freaking want to like love me and be a part of me? Like I, yeah. And your boys. And my freaking boys. They can, they They can use more. They can use, they they need the love, man. (laughs) Mom's a little cranky. They're very lovable too. Yeah. 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 Well, and I have, my sister's adopted. So, and then my parents adopted my youngest cousin. So like adoption's kind of been a a, A a recurring theme. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what it's taught me like on a spiritual level is that none of us own anyone. Yeah. We, we're just here to walk each other home. And, and I believe we make these little soul contracts with each other. And it's like, hey, I'm going to show up this way and teach you this. Like my daughter, Emma's birth mom, has, I've never been schooled in patience. And uh, anyway, like bringing Emma here and Eli's birth mom and then our dynamic and then my sister who died and her, her, her adopted child. And it's just like, 
yeah, it's it's just sur- it's been a life theme for me, and it's yeah. just like surrounded me. And I'm looking at this like being a birth mother is a different level of this because she's kind of the one that gets the the cultural stigma. Yeah, she also has to just kind of wait. She's in waiting mode to see like okay what what her decisions going by or like i'm not in control of anything i'm just sitting here waiting for how things need to to move and what you know so so i've always kind of taken that respectful stance of like hey i'll let susan and wendy come to me yeah um but now it's a little bit more proactive because like we i come we obviously like talk a lot and yeah Mm -hmm. and wendy comes to me a lot so yeah i mean i don't know if it's big sister maybe it is aunt energy and it's like aunt. It's aunt. Is it aunt? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sister would mean to. No, it's more concrete. Than it's that. more like you don't tell her what to do like a mom, but you're there to hear all your stuff. And, yes. and you love her. Yeah. Like that's what you respect. That. You yeah, have the opinion respect. and then yeah. you like, you know, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then the sister, the sister's yeah. like, I mean, I do like my sisters and I trust them more maybe than my aunts, but I do love my aunts. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, think, I don't really talk to my aunt. I mean, my mom's sister. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of aunts, but I don't ever talk to them. Yeah, and I'm not very up. But then I get offended when my nieces don't talk to me. I'm like, why aren't you calling me? <laughs> and I'm like, do I ever call my aunts? No. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on how close yeah. everyone is. So, yeah. I mean. Well, I think that I read somewhere once that like, so for a while it was Susan and I, her adoptive mom, was just like, on the phone all the time talking and then we went through seasons where we didn't and we'd come back and talk made a really good relationship and then it was almost like when Wendy got old enough to kind of start asking the deeper questions we kind of had to regroup yeah yes and um then what then it just took over like our relationship just kind of like I hardly ever talk to Susan now it's just you know yes so yeah we've really morphed and kind of flowed with what what's happening and I haven't tried to resist it and I haven't tried to control it it's just like kind of go it with just it. goes with the flow it. with yeah. it yeah yeah just yeah. letting it go. good it's well see and that's why I say I think it needs to have a different because it's not an ant it's more than yeah okay, let's, 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 we need to find like a term let's, let's, find, let's think of a term okay. guys not today like we'll just visit your homework <laughs> yeah I know I don't know because, because all, honestly it is it's more than the powerful yes. yeah it it's Mary so my so my Eli and Emma call their birth moms tummy mommy but tummy down there they're getting older yeah, I can't tummy call you mommy. my tummy mommy. <laughs> but I know. People would be like, I'm sorry, what? That works for little kids. <laughs> yes, 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 that's, that's sweet. sweet. Like, not for, not for. Yeah, so we'll, I'll be thinking about that. And if I if I think of yeah. something, yeah. I'll email you guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, going to put you on the email. I'll be like, yeah. what about this? What yeah. about this? Maybe we could chat GPT it. No, because I think it's, we're trying to make it fit into an area it just doesn't fit. So I mean, well, by, by, by putting it, negative. yeah, I know. But by trying to make it put, say, aunt or sister, it doesn't fit in no, any of those, those roles. No, it's like yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's more than that. Yeah, yeah. So I think it needs it. And, and, and no one will ever understand it. Like I yeah. still feel like people are probably like, it's so weird, but it's like, you're like no, they're just not. like we when they find out how open this is, they're just like, yeah, people. It's all <laughs> sorts of questions, but it's just for us. It's just what we've always known. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Sam, that's the thing is that nobody really talks about. Have you guys met a lot of people who are like open like this? We met quite a few. So the majority, would you say, are primarily now? Now, now, yeah, and 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 it works better on the other side. So it works better for the birth. Like, what would you say? Eighty percent, sixty percent? I'm curious. I would say different degrees of openness, probably ninety percent. Wow, that's That's huge. Uh, probably even more than that like my friend who plays she, her birth daughter is living with her right now going to college at the u that's it they they're oh, doing that's... they're doing the same major yeah wow wow but she doesn't see her as her daughter though yeah she does and but she her daughter wants to call her mom and she's like I, uh, I and she's like i'm not there yet that may be one day but i'm not there yet yeah so yeah oh. because she goes i'm not really her mom I mean, I right. had in the traditional. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Because that word "mom" has so much like. Mm. You say non-traditional mom. <laughs> yeah, not in the traditional. No tra- <laughs> not tra- not tra- mom. We're just talking about yeah, uh, not tra- in the traditional form uh, of what we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What but instead of birth mother, that like, sounds kind of that kind of sounds yeah. negative though. Non-traditional. Um, let's find a very positive. Well, my, yes, my friend's daughter. She has five daughters, and they all call me mom number two. Oh. I mean, I know it's like second mom. They're like, oh, second mom's going to come with me to find a wedding dress. 
Yeah. Second mom's going to come do this. Second mom's going to come do this. And it's but, kind of, it's hilarious. Yeah. But, and obviously there's not that same connection. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Well, I'll have to think on it. I know. Think yeah. on it and email Deal. me. Peace. Okay. Through. Well, thanks for joining us yes. today. That was really, really fun. I was fun. so nervous. Hi. So I don't know. Because I didn't give you any, like, any, anything. Because I can, like, talk and stuff, but I just wasn't sure, like, what, what, what Did we make you feel more yeah, comfortable? Yeah, it's great. Oh, good. Oh, easy, great. Because I just, I was, tell- I was telling Sheree, I was like, I don't technically look at questions. I like to ask questions because a lot of times they'll lead me away yeah. from yeah. the traditional questions. And then, plus, I don't want to be focused on, like, okay, what's the next question? I'm not listening to what they're saying. Yeah, in the moment. Not getting... I like that. And sometimes the authenticity of like, oh, I just remembered this story. I want to talk about this, you know? Yeah. So it just, it seems more natural to me. Yeah. And that's, that's what we want. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what was great. All right. Thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. you have to do a closing thing. So okay. <laughs> maybe look away. No, all right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Active Love Adoptions podcast. If you or someone you know is thinking of adoption, please re- reach out to us at aactiveloveadoptions.com.